Chapter 4 The Dream Fred woke up in a room he had never seen before. Oliver wasn't there. Mum or Dad weren't outside and there were no doors to the outside. There were windows but no doors. The room was completely white except for the floor which was like Pete's hut on the square but less gross. There were poles to climb and poles to swing on. There were slides and ladders. Fred realised where he was in a gymnastics club. He got up from the, a mat on top of a pole and fell fat, face flat on the mat. He ran across the mat and tripped over a wooden bench. There were lots of things to climb, to jump over and to dance with. He picked up his wand but it wasn't there. He had no idea what to do so he tried to climb, jump and dance. He couldn't dance so he dropped it. He tried to climb a pole that was five times longer than he was and thinner than he thought from afar. Good thing that there was some wooden poles sticking out of the wood. He climbed and climbed until he reached the top 15 minutes later. He looked over the building. It was extremely large and wide, even bigger than his own neighbourhood. Anything bigger than this would be too big to believe it. Something about the building made Fred think about how small his own house was. But then he walked off the wooden pole and landed on a mat, a soft one that saved his life. Fred was screaming while he fell, but now he felt better. He felt safer. He did a bit more roaming around, looking at the bean bags and the unnecessary amount of mats everywhere until he found a hole, a hole he could fit into. It was very dark down there and a bit and above his scary limit. He did it anyway. He got he just just to get out of this place. But then after four minutes of bending down, he reached the surface. He was so happy to see the grass and the pavement. Man, that thing was tight, Fred told himself. He needed a drink of water, so he went up to the freshwater lake and started drinking it. He didn't feel anything, but he saw everything. Mmm, he said to himself after drinking the water. Fred looked at the forest. He saw a spider bigger than anything he ever saw. Knocks him, he said simply. He forgot that he didn't have a wand. Instead, he hadn't a normal stick. He called for Pete, but he wasn't anywhere either. Help, Fred screamed. Nobody came. The spider came closer. He needed help, but there was no one. He thought about punching the spider, but only thought about it and it would do nothing to the spider. The spider went over the lake where Fred was drinking from. Fred ran, but the spider was quicker. When he was just about to step on Fred, he woke up, terrified of what happened. He'd realised that his sister was looking over him with a worried face on her. What's wrong? she asked nicely. Had a nightmare, Fred told her quickly. He looked at his desk. His wand was still there, unstolen, which made him happier. Can I have a try, Fred? Oliver asked him. Yes, Fred told Oliver. Food out, but she shouted. Nothing happened. Why is it not working? She had fret. You have to think of a food, then swing your wand behind your head, and finally you say, food apper. Okay, she said. Food apper, she shouted. And that m- moment, you guessed it, carrots appeared in a puff of blue smoke. Wow, she said, right before stuffing 50 carrots in her mouth. This is amazing, she told Fred after 30 seconds of eating carrots. Oliver loved carrots, if he didn't realise that already. It was her favourite food. It was her favourite food. Whenever she saw them, she'd eat all of them in under a minute. She liked carrots so much, she forced her mum and dad to put 20 carrots on her plate every meal. If the world ran out of carrots, she would go hysterical. More hysterical than losing a pet, which have you asked me, is crazy. The end of chapter four, I think. Yeah.